Καλησπέρα σε όλους σας. Πριν ξεκινήσω τη συνομιλία μου με τον εκλεκτό καλεσμένο, ετοιμάζομαι Χαράδα Πακολιάς, και είμαι ο δημιουργός της εταιρείας Άνσες, την Ελλάδα. Το αντίθετο της συζήτησης που θα ακολουθήσει αφορά την εγκύτητα της θεωρητικής εκπαίδευσης και την πρακτική εκπαίδευση και εν τέλει με τις ανάγκες της αγοράς εργασίας. Και πρακτικά είναι... I watched the previous panel and I would say that our panel is a follow-up of that, i.e. how education should be linked to the job market. There have been major investments here in Greece in the last few years. There has been an increase in modern entrepreneurship. There has been an increase in startup and scale-up investing. The main bulk of those investments relates to ICT and biotechnology. Those are knowledge-intensive sectors. And for those sectors, we have to have adequately trained talents. ANSYS HELAS is an example of such an investment. In 2019, ANSYS uh, acquired Greek HELIX and uh, our target is to hit the 200 employee mark. Let me now thank our eminent guest, uh, Nikos Papaioanou, a rector of the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, for accepting our invitation. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bakolas. Let me also thank the American Hellenic Chamber of Commerce for their invitation. Regarding this two-day discussion cycle, I think useful conclusions can be drawn. And indeed, Mr. Bakolias, our discussion is going to be the follow-up of the previous uh, interesting discussion with the participation of uh, people who are on the front line of the market and innovation. Someone generating innovation can only be uh, very important to higher education. So I wish to thank the board of the American Hellenic Chamber of Commerce for inviting me. Let's start our discussion. Okay, I do have some objections as to how much innovation is generated in universities and to what extent uh, this can be uh, commercialized, but we'll get to that. Let's discuss IT, which is Greece's fastest growing. Είναι ακόμα αρκετά υψηλή, περίπου 20%, ενώ γενικώς δείχνει τις ανεργίες στο 16%. 20% of uh, IT degree holders are unemployed against a national general average of 16%. In ANSYS, we hire almost one experienced uh, programmer per 100 uh, CVs uh, versus two or three junior programmers versus uh, 100 against 100 CVs. So what do you think can be done to improve the situation? Let me say that uh, I cannot agree, uh, given uh, my knowledge of things and my uh, perception, based on what my colleagues tell me, based on what alumni tell me, and based on what our university career office tell me. Those uh, university graduates are very much in demand. Uh, this is one thing. On the other hand, uh, pretty much everybody uh, seems to think that they are specialized IT experts. I feel that 
true specialists will not be unemployed. Regarding IT university graduates, this is a multifaceted issue. The question to me is not about the university graduates figure. Our political parties should reach consensus regarding the sector of education. It is up to the primary and the secondary education to spell out their needs so that primary and secondary education teachers receive the right guidance for IT as well. If we switch to private uh, technical education or even public sector, technical education, we see that uh, they too uh, turn out graduates, but university graduates are one thing and those other graduates are another thing. This brings me to higher education. Right now we have a considerable number of IT university departments all over Greece, perhaps it's high time that changed. I've been reiterating this uh, time and again uh, whenever we discuss among rectors. I feel that it is up to uh, the higher education people or the administration to say how many university graduates we need and how many university IT departments we need. Our university has their own digital governance center that is uh, staffed by uh, high-level IT software and hardware experts. Every four or five months, major executives of ours ponder the possibility of resigning and going to work for the private sector. What do I mean by that? And this brings me to the previous discussion of the previous panel, too. Speaking of innovation and education, universities nowadays do not come from the 60s or the 80s when our motto was knowledge for its own sake. Today's motto is knowledge for the sake of production. It's a fact that each year in MIT, 25% of the GDP of the state of Massachusetts, where MIT is located, comes from the programs, the investments, and the knowledge generated by MIT. Speaking of innovation, its components relating it to the economy are four in number. Let's start uh, with research and innovation, research and technology, the kind of uh, R&T that will lead us to technology number two, the capacities and skills that have to be built in order for innovation to be generated. Number three, uh, development, dissemination and uptake mechanisms for innovation because I may be claiming to be producing something innovative but the job market says I don't need this. Should this be termed innovation? We need to look into this. And number four, 
knowledge-intensive entrepreneurship, i.e. how innovation will be turned into uh, processes, products and services. Greek state universities, uh, given the situation in the last three or four years uh, with uh, the startups and the spin offs, we now have what it takes for them to flourish. We used to have three, and now we have 15 uh, spin offs in the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. The day before yesterday, I attended uh, an event uh, by the alumni of the uh, Mechanical Engineering Department of our university, uh, the uh, art. The ART uh, team was there. Um, those university students uh, start building uh, racing cars from zero, and now they are competing all over Europe. 300 university students have passed from this team. 180 uh, students are graduates, and 95% of those are now employed in companies that are active in the sector of the production of raw material that is needed to build a car. So those students themselves are worked as mentors, and they were the ones to prove this kind of thinking wrong, i.e. that it's not possible for the universities to go hand in hand with technology or to support technology or that they shouldn't. I fully agree with you. I know about the ART team. They are using our softwares for their car planning and there are other two uh, Greek teams as well. Indeed, uh, those guys uh, work on their own. We have them in Athens for the last five or six years too. And they do have this sense of initiative, but I feel that there is still this gap between university education and the job market. Businesses in the ecosystem find it hard to recruit people. They keep telling me that uh, they spend 80% of their time trying to recruit, but in vain. We should not forget that the universities are there to provide you with the basic corpus of knowledge. Specialization uh, comes afterwards. This does not mean that engineering departments or uh, the School of Medicine, for that matter, should be uh, providing uh, anyone with accomplished uh, surgeons, for example. So uh, we should not expect the university graduate to uh, be uh, specialized in each and every subject. Uh, universities uh, entail 50% education and 50% research. Uh, several years ago, uh, secondary uh, education uh, graduates uh, were in very high demand. This uh, then became the case for university graduates, but now it's no uh, longer question of your degree, but of your specialization. So the university is a portfolio of knowledge, and uh, specialization uh, will get you anywhere it's going to get you. I was in a symposium the other day, and uh, there I met a, uh, a Greek uh, person residing in Canada. Uh, he uh, was a civil engineering uh, graduate from the university, from the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, but uh, right now he's teaching political philosophy. 
Okay, I will agree with that. Uh, regarding specialization, uh, uh, the government is doing several things in that direction. And this uh, brings me uh, to uh, traineeship. Would you say that apprenticeships and traineeships uh, should be mandatory? In some university departments it is mandatory, in other university departments, in some other university departments it is optional. Regarding the undergraduates, let me say that uh, our apprenticeship uh, head is uh, the person that is in charge of this topic for the whole of Greece. This is not up to this or that uh, university assistant to organize. And of course, uh, trainees uh, should not just work in order to be used by other people. We have Erasmus Plus, and they are open to university uh, students as well as to secondary school graduates. Those people can be trained for six months in another European country. So we have to have apprenticeships and traineeships. The new legislation is offering this possibility, but there's a lot more that needs to be done. Regarding financial support, uh, the business sector is already offering it, but to us, duration is important. Uh, we feel that uh, two months is very little time. Absolutely, absolutely, Mr. Bakolias. In my capacity as rector of the Aristotle University of uh, Thessaloniki, I have already contacted some of uh, the boards of the major companies here in, in Thessaloniki, and you know uh, about the technological hubs here. Well, we try to uh, find the, the best people for them, and it has to be, yes, yeah, six months. Uh, two months is uh, absolutely not enough. Uh, we, too, have been in contact with the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. With regard to the Erasmus program, Erasmus is for other countries, and uh, we want to reverse this wave. Uh, why do you think that university students uh, want to leave abroad, despite the fact that there are job openings uh, similar to the ones they are looking for abroad, but they can find such job openings in Greece now? I've always thought that uh, Every young person can only benefit uh, from a transnational and a trans-university uh, way of thinking. I'm saying that uh, I, that everybody uh, should have a, a job experience as well as uh, university experience. Students uh, come to our university from abroad as well, but the thing is that the conditions should be met in order for Mr. Bakolias, uh, for example, to find what he's looking for abroad and then get back to Greece in order for his undergraduate studies that were paid for uh, by uh, uh, the Greek state, get back in order to reinforce uh, Greece's GNP. I fully agree. 
But maybe uh, the syllabus in some university uh, schools is not adequate, especially regarding uh, the departments of mathematics and physics, uh, regarding the number of graduates that could be hired in, uh, in Greece. Our annual turnover is 4,500 university graduates. Including uh, 1,500 of uh, mathematics graduates and 1,500 more of physics uh, graduates. Those people usually don't send us their CVs. And generally speaking, they know nothing about programming and they know nothing about the current job market. Do you know about that? And how do you think that this might change? This is a very correct observation. This means that we have to have more planning and programming in higher education regarding basic sciences. Four years ago, several uh, university departments of uh, mathematics were set up, and nowadays they have a teaching staff of two, so 100 or 200 university students uh, will go there, and in this way, all they will do is just postpone the problem, kick the can further down the road. So all they will be able to do is have a university degree with the word mathematics on it. So number one, we have to have planning and programming number two university entry grades are important and number three regarding basic scientists are the biologists have solved uh, the problem geologists as well and i am certain that this trend will go on would you believe some years from now that it's possible for a physics graduate to work in the uh, post-mortem investigation of causes of death on the basis of toxicology, not chemistry. This is now possible thanks to the IT viewed through physics. Those are modern specialties and uh, modern postgraduate degrees. Several of our own university graduates uh, uh, go abroad to, this, to these countries to learn about how it is possible to uh, investigate uh, COD on a post-mortem basis. I'm a physicist myself. Well, your subject matter is so broad, just like chemists. However, what we don't have yet is programming. They, they keep on solving equations manually. This is up to the curricula of each and every department. I'm not saying that everything is perfect, far from it. What's better is the enemy of what's good. And our, and our universities have to be working in this way. They have to be trying to get better. And uh, maybe my current improvement, for example, will be sorely inefficient seven years from now or five years from now. Well, how can you attain that? This is up to the General Assembly of each university department. 
The, the teaching staff uh, have to be broad in their approach, they have to know the labor market, and age is also an issue because the newcomers uh, regarding our uh, faculty um, members uh, know very many things about the current uh, job market. Uh, of course, having said that, it's not possible to have a, a child surgery or a child ophthalmology as a, as a basic science. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. I really uh, love your optimism and let's hope it materializes. I'm going to travel to Thessaloniki shortly and let's meet. Well, we should not be focusing on problems per se. We should be envisioning the future with optimism based on the love that we should have for what we do. If you love what you do, your future will be better than your past. Of, indeed, let's spread the word to our students. Thank you.